Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent demonstrator in the U.S. and I'm here to bring you another live paper crafting class here on Facebook. It is April, Wednesday, April 24th today at 11 a.m. Central Time. That's when I usually do my, my live broadcast. So I hope that you can join in in future times if you um, are new to this. Uh, it's really fun. I love teaching and I can't wait to share what I have to share with you today. Um, I'm a big paper pumpkin fan. How many of you are paper pumpkin fans? <laughs> hey, I see some people chiming in now. This is awesome. Hi, LaDon. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Lori. I love the smiley face. <laughs> Hi, Deborah. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. So I'm a huge paper pumpkin fan and I am going to share with you some alternate project ideas in this Facebook Live. Um, before we begin though, I want to just talk to you about lives and how they work. So basically, if you're watching this at 11 a.m. on April 24th, you are live with me. <laughs> if you're not, you are probably watching the recording and that could be on Facebook or it could be on YouTube. Hi everyone, awesome. Rosalind's with us again. Hey Mary Jo. Hi, hi Michelle, awesome. Yay, we have Paper Pumpkin fans. Let me know if you're a Paper Pumpkin fan, I would love to know that. So. The way this works is um, if you can comment while we are broadcasting or even afterwards, you get a chance to win a prize. And I have some paper pumpkin related prizes today. We also draw from last week's um, live broadcast, uh, the recording. And if you've commented on that one since then, which gives you about a week, then you can get in on that prize too, the second drawing. Hi, Manuel, how are you? Hey, there's Shannon again. Awesome, it's so fun to see familiar names. Nancy and Vicki are with me. Hi, you guys. Okay, so let's um, see what else I have to share before I get started. Um, Paper Pumpkin, it's an awesome uh, monthly program. You get a kit that comes to you in the mail and it, it comes to your mailbox. So you don't have to like go to someone's house and pick it up, you don't have to, you know, be it, it's not inconvenient at all. It's totally convenient. It comes to your mailbox. Um, it comes once a month around mid month. Um, it uh, has paper crafting goodies in it, and it's you get a ton for your money. You get a stamp set. You get an ink pad, which is called a spot, and then you get all these consumables. Adhesives are included. Um, all you need is like a scissors and a clear block. And the, the first kit that you get includes your clear block. So, <laughs> yay, Anna just got her first paper pumpkin kit. You got a good one. Well, they're all good. I love them all. I say that about every kit, but this one, again, because, you know, it's current, I'm just totally enthralled with it, and I can't wait to share with you some of the fun ideas that I did. Now, you don't have to come up with alternate projects. You don't have to create with it. If you have no creative bone in your body whatsoever, hey, Woodbury, Minnesota. Hi, Terry. <laughs> um, I used to live in Oakdale, by the way. Um, sorry, ADHD moment there. <laughs> Just saw the Woodbury and I had to respond. Um, so if you have no creative bone in your body, this is a perfect place to begin to build your creativity because what happens is you get the kits, you follow the directions as is, you create the projects as intended, and eventually you get in this mode of creativity building inside of you and you are creating cards to give to people, projects to give to people, pretty soon you're venturing into the alternate projects, which is what I love to share. And I've done that with every single kit since the get-go, since March 2013 when they first began. So let me share with you the supplies. Let's get the computer set up here um, so you can see the fun. This is what you're gonna be using, okay? <laughs> Um, if you are going to be creating the same projects that I'm going to show you today, then you will need for your monster bookmarks, yay, we're making bookmarks. I'm so excited. <laughs> if you want to make them along with me, you'll need gray granite cardstock and mint macaron cardstock. Now, I'm also going to show you some additional bookmarks towards the end. So that's what this is over here, the supplies for additional bookmarks. Um, and I'll be sharing these on my blog tomorrow along with this broadcast that's been recorded by then. And so you don't have to wait till Saturday to see the close-up photos. These are optional extra supplies. And the reason why I put the optional ones, um, or why I call them optional is because paper pumpkin people, well, most of them started out as non-crafters or new to crafting. Paper pumpkin is geared towards someone who doesn't own it all. 
okay? So you don't have to own it all. <laughs> Hi, Jennifer. You don't have to keep calling yourself a stalker. <laughs> it's good to see you again, or see your name at least pop up. Thank you for chiming in. Um, so you don't need to own it all. The Gray Granite Cards uh, Classic Ink Pad, there's a little tiny one that's included in your kit. Every kit comes with ink. And um, so that's optional, but I like to use my big, huge ink pads because it's really quick for me. But um, also along with that, you don't need clear, clear blocks because your first kit comes with a clear block. So I put optional. I'm gonna be using sizes D and C for this one. I like to have D, C, A, and B, well, A, B, C, D, um, in, next to me when I'm working with paper pumpkin kits because the largest size stamp that they will ever create for these kits is going to be going to work with size D so you don't really need anything beyond that um, somehow sentimental rose and monster don't go together in your mind <laughs> I love it Barbara yeah I know I, I heard and I haven't found them yet but I heard some people are creating owls so it's kind of like um, I think the same thing I'm guessing that you know anyways you'll see Okay, um, the Take Your Pick tool and Terra Tape Adhesive, you can use the adhesives that are in the kit. These are just wonderful things to use together. Uh, the Pierce Mat is great for photopolymer stamps and you don't have to have it, but it's highly recommended because it gives you that extra cushion that other rubber stamps have and photopolymer ones don't. Uh, snail adhesive, again, adhesives included in the kit. Grid paper, you can use scrap paper and the chamois is to clean off your stamps, but you could use a wet or damp um, washcloth. So seriously, you don't have to own it all. These are the other supplies I'm gonna be using along with the cardstock or consumables. I'll be using the kit, of course. Now, I have to point out that if you are not a subscriber and you did not get this kit, um, just watch it for the ideas because you can apply these ideas to other, other paper crafting projects, okay? Um, if you aren't a subscriber, you may be turned on to trying the next kit though. Uh, after I show you these fun things. Mint Macaron Classic Ink Pad, I'm adding a new color. The trimmer, the snips, those are kind of like necessary things if you're gonna do alternate projects um, as a paper pumpkin person. So I highly recommend getting a paper cutter and some scissors. Um, and then I'm using a couple circle punches for these projects. So let me set my computer aside and set up the desktop here so that we're ready to roll. Um, Funky color, why are we doing that again? You guys don't see what I'm seeing, but all of a sudden I have like this, okay, I think it's better. <laughs> it's so weird. Okay, we're set up on the table. I, it's, it's strange, because when my, com my phone is actually the computer that looks down upon my desk, and when I'm not using it for a while, all of a sudden it gets kind of yellowish. It's white again, but it, it was, doing some funky stuff. Okay, so paper pumpkin kits. When you open them up, uh, you, you consume and consume and consume. You, you get a bunch of fun goodies. So you get the flyer, and it comes with photos and directions, um, some extra little info on the back, including what you get in the kit, coordinating colors, and then you also get a link to Stampin' Up's how-to video. These were the supplies that came in this kit. This is a new one that I haven't really done much with yet. Um, so, <laughs> I like to open up two of them. I still have more projects to create. Um, so then we also uh, need to share with you first before we begin the projects that I made and shared today on my blog. So if you follow me on my blog slash website at stampyourartout.com, let's just put that up there, then you can um, see some alternate projects and I share them about three times a month. I do my big one, which I did today, and then I do what's called my blog hop share and I'm going to be hopping with a bunch of demonstrators tomorrow. We're going to be sharing alternate projects tomorrow. So that's why this is going to go on there. And then um, I also share towards the end of the period when people can subscribe so that you're reminded again that it's time to subscribe. So let's see what people are writing so far. Shared with your daughter. Oh, thank you for sharing, Robin. Um, yes, share the video if you can. I, I would love it. So this is, uh, these are the projects that you make, or the cards that you make with the kit. Totally beautiful stuff, right? Oops. <laughs> Even better when it's right side up. Let's get this out of the way here. Okay, and then of course you get these beautiful envelopes and they're lined with a nice um, designer paper look to them. So this is what I made for my blog today. 
So I did some eclipse cards. And eclipse just means that they're kind of coming up and out at you, kind of at a dimension. And then I did, um, I took the box, because you get a gift box in the kit too, and I cut all the supplies for the box in half and made half size boxes. And then I did what's called floating frame cards. And these are very trendy right now, at least with Stampin' Up! demonstrators. We're all over this. <laughs> We're having fun with it. So, um, so you'll want to check out my blog to get the directions in that video. It's something that you can't really explain in words. So you have to watch the video for that. Anyways, I'm doing the corner bookmark again. And remember, some of you that have been with me, um, you saw that I made a corner bookmark a few weeks ago. It was before Easter. It was Maybe it was like a, over a month ago. <laughs> I don't know. But I did it with this. And so I'm going to be making another one with the paper pumpkin kit. It's time to dive in. Oh my gosh, almost 12 minutes later. All right, so we're going to start with the envelope. So I'm going to pull this out. You're going to hear some noise. Hang on. Everything was sitting on my trimmer. Um, we're going to pull out the trimmer. And we're going to start cutting into the envelope. Now, when you um, cut into the envelope, you first want to measure how tall it is because we're going to make a square shape. And this is just slightly over three and a half inches. So I'm going to go slightly over three and a half inches. Let me zoom in here. Um, hang on. There we go. I'm going to, going to go slightly over th three inches in the other direction. So we're just going to bring it into our trimmer and we'll just cut it like this. So you can save that because that's like precious stuff to us paper pumpkin people. <laughs> there's a piece of printed paper in there and there's white cardstock if you think of it that way. So don't throw that away. And then you're gonna turn it this way and we're gonna cut off, the flap is now open, we're gonna cut off the flap um, just over three and a half inches. So we're slicing just inside that score line. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy, how are you? Kathy, Kathy from California, and I don't know if I ever say your name right. I always say it Kathy Liu. Is it Kathy Liu? I don't, I'm not sure. Anyways, nice to see that you're joining us again. So you can see now I've got an instant closed corner here from this envelope. This is a real easy way to make these corner bookmarks. Super simple. This is actually what I first set out to do with the one that I shared a while ago. Okay, so now we take our pencil and we take a straight edge. And I forgot my straight edge, hang on. Also known as a ruler. So we're gonna connect um, this point to this point and we're gonna, and we're gonna cut off all of that right there because we don't want that in there. So let's just set that up and carefully draw your pencil line. You don't wanna be too dark, although that's nice and dark. <laughs> I'll have to add ruler to the supplies. And then you take your paper snips <laughs> Thanks, Arlene. <laughs> she cased them. That's awesome. That means you made them. Case means copy and share everything or um, uh, copy and selectively edit is a, another term that people have been using for case, C-A-S-E. So if you're new to stamping, that's what she meant. And then we're just trimming right inside that pencil line like that. Now we have this little notch here, but that's okay because we're gonna, we're gonna put a triangular piece over the top of this. So now we're gonna grab our card base and our trimmer, and we're gonna cut the yellow portion off. So that's three and a half inches. And I'm gonna bring this over here. And we're gonna cut at three and a half inches. So again, making a square shape, okay? All right, now, oh, one more, one more cut. Sorry, don't put this away yet. Um, we're going to diagonal cut. And so you can actually make two of these bookmarks from one card base. Notice how I cut first into the, the piece and sliced outward. And now I'm gonna go back in, find my beginning and slice upward. Because if you if you push right into a corner, uh, a point like that, it's gonna, maybe jam <clears throat> your card stuck up a little bit. All right, so now we have this piece, and again, you can make two of these, so we're gonna set that aside. So we're gonna put this right over here like that, and that's gonna become our corner bookmark. So when we're reading a book, hey, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna grab this. Pretend like this 
is the page of your book. And I, I chose this because it has words on it. It's, it's one of the cards in the kit. But let's say this is the page of your book. You just put it right over the top and then you close your book on top of it and that holds your place. Okay, that's, that's why it's called a corner bookmark. So now what we need to do is we need to take and stamp this piece. So we're gonna grab the stamps that are in the kit. And for this one, we're just gonna be using the leaf. Um, let me share with you what those stamps look like again, sorry. So these are the stamps. You get some really great um, sentiments and you get some beautiful designs and these are called distinctive um, distinct with INK for the ink part uh, that's a term that Stampin' Up! gives their stamps that are photorealistic so you just stamp one image and it has depth and it's just a, a nice full image without having multiple stamps okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the gray granite ink that comes in the kit although I have the larger size the one that comes in the kit, again, is a small little spot like this. Okay, so we'll open this up and we'll grab our leaf. And I wanna make sure I'm doing this right, so hang on a minute, I have to cheat. Um, okay, I think I got it. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna stamp this and we're gonna stamp it, hopefully in the right spot, because I don't have my little eyeballs for our monster to guide me right now. So we're gonna stamp like this. And what I did, so that you know, so you can do it yourself, is I went, I took this little edge here and I, I looked at it as if it was cut in half. And I started just slightly below that half mark and made sure that these two top leaves were parallel, um, the top of them, I should say. Here, let's go like, oh no, the bookmark. Um, so that the top of them um, made a parallel line to, the, to that section there, to the hypotenuse. Is that hypotenuse? I think so. I don't know. I haven't taught in a long time. So we're going to do that on the other side. <laughs> we're going to go like that over here. So stamp. And now we're going to, uh, slightly lower. That's okay. And now we're going to stamp, um, and I want to make sure I'm doing this right again. We're going to stamp a little bit off this way now. So we're going to go in between. So we're going to take those leaves and we're going to rotate them so that the leaves fill in the spots in between. Does that make sense? <laughs> so on this side, we're gonna rotate like that. Okay, so we have our eyes starting to form. And these actually aren't the eyes. So when I said, oh no, my bookmark, you guys, I don't know if I should show you this. It's just so tiny, but I, I dropped it in my ink pad. It'll be okay. All right, so now we're gonna take our, um, our circle punches, okay? So, hey Kathy, how are you? <laughs> We've got the one inch and the three quarter inch circle punch. This one is retiring. I'm so sad. I'm not sure why they're retiring um, this one. And then there's another one, the one and three quarter inch. It makes me so sad. I think there's another one too. It's like they took out a few of them. I don't know why, because I love having my circle punches really close together in sizes, and these are perfect for eyes. So we're gonna grab our scraps from the envelope. Actually, let's, let's do it from the card base. So we're gonna take and we're gonna punch out two circles. Now, you could just put the circles on like this and they'd be wide open eyes, right? But um, I'm going to punch them so that I have a portion that's not being punched. And you can see that you can get eyes that look like they're a little more mellow. Okay? They're, they're not wide. <laughs> so let's grab that one and let's just set it over the top of this one and take our scissors. Line it up and trim. Oh, as I'm looking at my fingernails... I want to point out something, and I don't, <laughs> Vicky's watching. Vicky was with me here a couple days ago, and I said, do you think I should paint my, well, actually, I said, do you think they're going to be okay if I don't paint my fingernails? I'm trying to let my fingernails breathe. Those of you that use gel um, nail polish or even like the acrylic nails, I think they're called, um, where it's like a fake nail on top, the gel polish and that kind of stuff that has to be taken off with something that's really harsh, it's called acetone. And after a while, I just think, you know, I need to I need to stop 
using it for a while. <laughs> so forgive my fingers. They, um, the fingernails are kind of a mess today. Okay, so there are my eyes. <laughs> you guys are probably like, whatever, Rachel, just keep stamping. Now we're going to take our scrap of mint macaron. And so this is an extra color. Now you could use um, really any color, but I wanted to do something that was uh, more like, well, here, I'll just do a full one, more like the color in the kit. But you could really grab any scrap that looks like an eyeball color to you. Now I'm going to lay this over the top and I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to trim it here. And that kind of helps me to know how much I should have cut off on that piece and how much I should cut off on this piece. Okay, so we're laying them over the top of each other again and trimming. So now we've got our really nice relaxed eyes. We could make them go crossed um, or we could, <laughs> oh, she looks angry or he. I'm gonna call it a girl because it has eyelashes. The leaves became the eyelashes. So you can see you can play around with the face and do all kinds of things. Let's grab our snail adhesive and you could take and use, um, you do the same with yours too, Robin. You give your nails a break once in a while. Yeah, and I feel bad because I'm, I'm doing a lot of videos and I, I feel like my hands should look good, but they just have to take a break right now. Thank you. I, <laughs> you know, they're not too bad, but if you look close up, and I'm not going to zoom in if I can help it, um, there's like little tears and I don't know, they don't look good right now. So, okay, so I've got my eyes on my the white parts and now we can go ahead and add them to our triangle piece. I forgot. <laughs> I bet, oh, thank you, Karen. <laughs> she likes the eyelashes. I forgot to um, use my pierce mats again. I'm so bad. So those of you that have been watching for a while, you know that I have had a very cushiony surface for a long time and I now have a new desktop. Um, let's see if I can zoom out. There's my desk. Um, my dad is resurfacing it right now. It's not completely glued down, but it's beautiful, right? And so I don't have my little um, foam, sorry, zooming back in, my little foam table, that my fake table that was under foam. I forgot to bring this in when I stamped. So you can see it's optional. I put it as an optional thing, but it really does help to make your images so much more even. I'll try to remember it the next time. <laughs> okay, so now that we have our eyes almost done, we can add this. Um, actually, we can't add it yet because we need to do the mouth. So in your kit, you get this um, piece here that comes with a bunch of labels that you cut out. And I thought that these were pretty fun looking teeth. <laughs> so we're gonna add them. And I think if we add them with a little bit of tear and tape, it'll be a nice strong adhesive that should hold it down. So we'll just, and we don't have to put it all the way across, but just, you could use snail too. Okay, and this is where the tear and tape basically basically comes in is um, it just helps to hold things in place that you're worried about losing because it's not a it's not a real you know huge thickness here that's going to attach to my project. So I want to make sure. There we go. Oh, he, she, he, she is looking so cute. So there's the teeth. <laughs> no nose on this one. Um, okay, now we can add it to this piece here. You can see our monster is coming together. Okay. And then we just line it up. And I think what I did is I lined it up. Yeah, I lined it up with the bottom edge here because I wanted that to be flush with the bottom edge of the envelope. And then stuck it on like that. Now wait, it's not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Robin. <laughs> All right. Um, I love this. Everyone's sharing their nail, nail polish um, schedules and, <laughs> and what they do. This is fun. Okay. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to add the bottom part of the mouth because, you know, the mouth can have a bottom jaw too, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take our triangle piece that was left over 
that we decided not to use for a second bookmark. And we're gonna bring it to, and I don't know if you can see that here, we're gonna bring it to this one inch line. So you're just gonna trim off one inch. And we're gonna snip out a couple of these. And we're gonna bring in our tear and tape again. Flip this over. By the way, we are having awesome weather again today. I'm loving what we're seeing in Minnesota right now. It's been fun. Well, I'm lucky my cat has gotten out many nights now and he is just beat tired when he comes in. So you haven't seen him. He hasn't really uh, shown up in my videos lately. He's getting exercise. Okay. Yeah, he was given to us, we got him in September, and he was like two and a half years old um, from our lovely neighbors. We love them, we miss them, they just couldn't take Lucky with them. Um, anyways, he was an outdoor cat already, and you can't, you can't make an outdoor cat stay an indoor cat. Um, we tried. <laughs> so, yep, he gets to get out at night. But that means he gets to keep his claws too. Nobody's going to take them away from him. So there is my lovely bookmark, almost finished, almost finished. Hang on a minute. We've got to add some dreamy, dreamy eyes. So this here, have you guys seen this in the latest cartoons that are out there here? I have one more on this sheet here. Um, in cartoons, they make these, and they're usually white dots that are in the center of the eyes, but um, it's kind of like a little, I don't know if I'm gonna do this right or not, but because I haven't, I haven't pre-made this one. We might have to adjust these. I'm not pressing them all the way down. But they're supposed to be like dreamy little spots on the eyes. And when they're white, they make, they make somebody, a cartoon character look like they're in love with somebody or in love with something or glowing or, you know, it's kind of like that sparkle. So I thought I would try that with this, this gal here. So now we have our bookmark done. But I have, I have the scary one now. We're going to do the scary one. Michelle asked if I'm near the Mall of America. I am not. Um, we're about 45 minutes away. Okay, so yeah, I'm at one, of, one of the northern suburbs. So now we're gonna take this pink envelope and we are going to trim, same measurement, so slightly over three and a half by slightly over three and a half, like that. And then we're gonna measure with the ruler, the straight edge and my pencil, and we're gonna slice across like so. And trim with the trimmer, or the cut, the, what's this called? A scissors. <laughs> trim with the scissors. And you're not trimming um, the back piece. That's why you have to get your hands in there and cut straight across. Sorry. I'm not sure if there's any other way. <laughs> I'm sure there is, but I haven't thought of it. Okay, now we're gonna grab our gray granite cardstock. Now, if you're new to stamping, you get your cardstock typically in eight and a half by 11 sheets. And so you can just cut off three and a half inches from one end. It really doesn't matter what end. And then rotate that piece and cut it at three and a half inches. And now you've got all this extra cardstock that you can use for cards and other fun things. Now we're going to do the same thing where we cut on a diagonal. Now this one is where it's going to possibly be compared to an owl, which I've heard people are doing again with the images with this kit. Um, we're going to grab our gray granite ink again and we're going to start stamping eyes with the big flower stamp. So I'm going to zoom in a tad. So here we have the flower stamp that came in the kit and I'm making a fluffy monster with this one. So here we go. We're going to picture where the eyes are. Um, might help to make like a little mark. I don't know. That way you can kind of see where you're going each time. So I've got two little dots there, which I think you can see. And now we're going to go ahead and just stamp that image so that the dot is in the middle of the flower. And great thing, you can see right through photopolymer. Oh, a mini bow would be great. I love that idea, Melissa. Awesome. Yes, snips. That's what our scissors are called, paper snips. 
And our adhesive that we typically use is called snail. So snips and snails and puppy dog tails, right? Does anyone, does anyone ever <laughs> say that besides me? <laughs> okay. Um, and then we're going to just stamp this one same way so that the center of the flower is right over the dot. Now it's okay if your petals of your flowers overlap because it is a monster. So we're gonna actually come in up here with some fluffiness and over here and over here. And then with this piece, we're gonna trim it. Actually, I'm gonna just take one that I've already done. Um, so that's ready to go. That piece is set up. Now we can move this off to the side Actually, you know what? Let's clean off our stamps really quick, okay? So stamp them down on your surface and then take your chamois, and I, I got smart, I have a bowl. <laughs> Ring it out and then just wipe across the surface. Chamois are awesome, you guys. Um, for those of you that have paper pumpkin kits and not a lot of other stuff, grab those chamois in the online store. And then take your um, sweatshirt and wipe your hands on them before you get started with the rest of your stamping. Okay, next, um, for this one, I wanna check my cheat sheet here. Okay, now we're gonna take the ha, half inch, half inch circle punch. No, this is a three quarter inch. This is the one that's leaving. <laughs> okay, and we're going to punch out a couple pieces of white from one of our bases. And this time, instead of doing um, pre-cut eyes, because we can have full eyes, we're gonna make eyelids, okay? So to do an eyelid, we're just gonna take the extra amount from our trimmed off piece of gray granite, which you would have if, so I already, I already did this. <laughs> I already stamped and cut that off. So you would have about this much left. So then you would come in and you would um, punch out one of these or two halves. So you could, oh, and I got my table. I got my table wet from the chamois. I am not a chamois user very often. I typically use my, my other cleanup pad, but that's okay. We'll just um, get a new one, okay? Because we don't want to get our project wet. So let's grab a new one. There. <laughs> Gotta love it. This one's a little dirtier, but that's okay. Okay, so we have our new surface. <laughs> It's not wet, it's not gonna affect our project. Okay, our eyeballs are there, and we have cut out our one piece of three quarter inch circle gray granite. We'll just cut that in half like that. So again, you could punch out two halves or you could punch out one and cut it in half. These are gonna go onto the tops of our eyeballs. You could use the glue dots that come in the kit or you can just use the snail adhesive like I did but we're just gonna go like that. And we're not gonna push down real hard because we're gonna insert um, some enamel dots that come in the kit. So now I'm just gonna play around with this. We're gonna make a scary monster. So in cartoon drawing, to make a scary monster, you make the eyebrows or the eyelids tilt in or the eyebrows if you're doing eyebrows, but you want them to tilt inward and down. So that's why we've done that. So let's grab two of these enamel dots and quickly just tuck them slightly under. There's one. Yes, he's gonna have pink eyes because he's bloodshot or something, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, monsters have red eyes, don't they? So these are close, because that's the color that comes in the kit. And now we can take and stick these guys down to our triangle. And again, tilting inward will make him look angrier. Boy, he needs to look even angrier than that. <laughs> okay, I think the teeth will help when we bring those in. Okay, so the teeth are next. Oops, my eyebrow moved. Hang on. The teeth are next, and the teeth we're gonna make from the banner pieces that come in the kit. So you can get these um, from this piece here, and there's also a piece in the kit that is used on this card here, um, this banner piece, so you could use that too because they're both, I lost a piece of my card, I'll have to fix that later. They are both, they both, <laughs> it's sticking to me. 
they both have this um, little serpent's uh, or snake tongue look at the end, you know. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take and lay one on top of the other. So you only need two in order to do this. We're going to lay one on top of the other. And we're just going to use our scissors because this is our guide and we're just going to trim. And we're going to do it one more time. And we'll trim. Easy peasy to get lots of them. Then you don't have to use up a whole bunch of banners. You only need You only need two to make from one of them. Does that make sense? So I've only used one up, but I used the other one as a guide. Now we're going to flip this over and this is where the tear and tape really does come in handy because you want to um, make sure that this uh, corrugated, it's corrugated paper by the way, will really stick down. So we'll put one there. Uh, <laughs> okay, advantage to not having fingernail polish on you guys. My fingernails aren't thick. They actually work kind of like the take your pick tool right now. <laughs> Fun. Hey, Nancy, I'm glad that you got to catch part of the live as well. Thanks for joining. Um, all right. Again, if you're commenting, you guys, you're in for the drawing, by the way. So, okay, we're going to take and we're going to put one of these coming upward like that. And then the other ones... Can you see that there? And then the other ones um, we are going to have come down. So we kind of have to fix, I know what I'll do. I'll put these together like a puzzle because I want to make sure that his teeth are aligned and he doesn't have to go to the orthodontist. Okay, so now his teeth are aligned and now we just lay this right on top here. Do I, yeah, I have the backing off. We'll just lay that right on top like that and it'll pick up those teeth. Yay! Okay, so we can grab our envelope and I'm gonna put another piece of tear and tape down just to be on the safe side. He stayed up too late reading. Yeah, so I could make, <laughs> that was funny, Rhonda. So I could make um, his eyebrows, his eyelids go the other way and he could be a happy tired monster. But sometimes kids, they like to get bookmarks, especially my boys, um, well, when they were younger. They like to get bookmarks and things that have um, scary monsters in them, not just cutesy ones, right? Boys, well, I don't know, maybe girls are like that too, but my boys definitely like scary things. Okay, so that's set. We'll just set that one on the bottom. And you'll be able to see the teeth on this one a little bit better because it's a much darker envelope lining on this one. Um... Oh, and I have more bookmarks to share, so these aren't the only two. I'm not going to make any more in front of you because I don't want the video to go, to go too long. But I have um, four, three others, three others to share with you. So again, I'm using the tear and tape on this because of the dimension that the corrugated paper has. There's a little bit of, a um, little bit more thickness to it than your other cardstock. Okay. So again, if, if you want, you can take the take your pick tool and you can lift up that adhesive backing that way. Um, this tool is awesome for lots of other things. I'm sure you have seen it, but I'm going to go in with my fingernails because my fingernails are useful right now. This is so amazing. <laughs> okay, now that we have the backing off or the release paper from that, you'll get to see our little monster guy come together. And there he is. He's our scary little monster. Arr! <laughs> so we have that one. And where's our other one that we just did? Here she is. So a couple um, fun ideas for bookmarks. This is, um, oh, I made two of them. This is the uh, one that I did with just um, the rose image instead of trying to make a monster out of it I just took and cut one of the pieces down in the kit to make um, a triangular piece that looked like it had nice flowers in it stamp the extra leaves in mint macaron and then use mint macaron cardstock behind that you can also see that I've used a fun little punch in that corner that is the detailed trio punch which comes with a, a corner rounder it comes with this fun one and it comes with this punch that you can do 
straight straight in. It's not a corner one, but it um, these two go in the corner and this one goes straight in. And you'll see that on my next bookmark. So this is one that you could um, give to someone wanting something not so scary. <laughs> and then this one is the one that I use that other punch with. So there's that, that punch right there in through the top. And that's just done with one of the pieces. Where is that finished card? I'll find it. Um, here we go. So the rose book bookmark that I did was using this layer here. And this one was using this layer here. And notice it's basically just the same piece, but upside down. Um, and then I just put a hole in it and stamped Happy Mother's Day on it. This ribbon is a new ribbon that's coming out in the upcoming catalog. The annual catalog is going to be released June 4th. So if you are not a demonstrator and you can't peek at it right now, because we get to see it online on our side of the dem demonstrator website, um, you can at least get a catalog from your demonstrator or from myself if you don't have a demonstrator. And you can um, see all this wonderful stuff around mid-May, I think, is when the catalogs will start shipping. So. Let me know if you don't have a demonstrator and you would like a copy and I can give you a link to how to get a copy. So there's that. Um, oh, let's leave it down here so you can see it. And then the last one is a real simple one. Actually, it's probably harder than this one though, but it's using just the labels. So the labels that come in the kit, this one here, I just put two of them back to back, use the Blossom Builder Punch, which is retiring to punch out a couple flowers, used this punch, which is um, not retiring, but with a one and three eighths inch uh, scallop circle and some extra foil, um, silver foil paper, and put them back to back. So it's two foil papers back to back with two labels back to back, and just a ribbon through them attached with some tear and tape adhesive. This is the silver metallic edge ribbon. Um, beautiful. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to mention which ribbon this is, right, Julie? I'm guessing you're asking about the mint mint one. This is called the, mm, it's in the supplies. What's it called? Mint Macaron uh, Textile Ribbon. So, and it's with the, it's advertised in the new catalog with the um, mosaic stuff. So again, just a fun little flower. And the way that this bookmark works, let's say this is your book. You just put it right in like this if you've never used a ribbon bookmark before. Real easy. So lots of fun bookmarks. I hope that you enjoyed those ideas. Uh, I want to tell you about the upcoming paper pumpkin kit. So again, if you're not a subscriber, you really need to be. It is the best way to get pre-cut, scored, um, lots of embellishments. You get a stamp set, you get ink, you get lots of supplies in these kits. They're around $20 US. Um, Canada, I think they're a little bit more, but that's Canadian dollars, so it comes out to be like the equivalent, I guess. Anyways, we have a peek at what the upcoming kit is. And if you are a demonstrator in a country that doesn't get paper pumpkin subscriptions, you need to watch this and pay attention because Stampin' Up! is going to be offering these kits, not as a subscription, but they're going to be in the online store for your market. So if you are in Australia, New Zealand, France, Germany, um, you, get, you get to choose to purchase this kit if you would like. So on the back side of this flyer that came in the April kit that explained the distinctive stamps is this little advertisement here for the May kit. And you have to be a subscriber um, or subscribe, get your um, subscription active by May 10th. Okay, May 10th is the date. And then you'll get it in this wonderful pretty box. It's, it's, a, it's a collector box. The kit was uh, designed with the help of Shelly Gardner, who is one of the co-founders of Stampin' Up. Um, she's a very creative lady and I love her style. It's very beautiful. It, this is a beautiful kit. So at On Stage, we got to make one of the four card designs. Note cards, they're mailable. They can be mailed, and um, this way they can, they can give us more supplies in the kit too when they give us note cards. Gotta love note cards. So this is one of the four designs that you get to make with the May kit. We don't know what the other three designs look like, but if you look at this, you're like, 
oh, well, hello, I gotta get the kit. So, and then they come with um, pre-lined envelopes too, very pretty designs with even a very fancy front to them. So your cards that you send to people are really pretty. And then in the May kit, you're gonna get this stamp set. I think you can see it. So um, this stamp set is one that we got to use at on stage, and I was one of the lucky people that got to pick this as my prize at the end from our table. So lots of beautiful little sentiments in there, and you can see that the cards are gonna be gorgeous. To subscribe, there will be a link in my video description. If you have a demonstrator, go through them. If you do not, I would love it if you'd be one of my subscribers. Um, I offer exclusive projects, gifts, prizes, that sort of thing. Um, to my subscribers, I treat them well. I'm sure other demonstrators do too, So, I, but this is my video, so I get to say that. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much. I hope that you enjoyed that. Um, retiring products list have posted. Make sure that if you are a fan of, of Stampin' Up! products, I'm gonna move this eye, it's kind of bugging me. <laughs> if you're a fan of Stampin' Up! products, that you make sure that you visit the online store and you look at the clearance rack, because the clearance rack contain, or not the clearance rack, the clearance rack, that contains some good things too, but there's an area where it says retiring or not leaving or something like that, and you'll want to get in on that. Um, let's do some drawings. Yay! Last week's. Um, last week's prize was a Memories and More card kit, because I showed off some fun stuff last week. Oh my gosh, you have to check out that video. This one is the leftover prize for the Big Plans Memories and More card kit. So I'll draw the winner for that one first and then the winners from this video, from this broadcast, will get to choose. So they're gonna get a clear block and it's equivalent to a D-sized block. Um, and then, so it's always nice to have extra blocks. And then they get to pick from um, three leftover, because again, I open two kits. <laughs> every month. I have these as prizes. So you get to pick from one of these stamp sets. These are from Past Paper Pumpkin Kits. Um, so you get to pick one of those. And then I'm going to throw in a couple pens. So each winner gets a couple pens. So we'll draw a winner from this month and a winner, I'm sorry, a winner from this week right now. And then next week we'll pick another winner. So are we excited? Okay, let me grab my computer and we will set up the camera. Oops, hang on. Oh my goodness, it always does this fun stuff to me. There we go. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go over to the, um, hopefully I have it set up. Hang on a minute, I'm gonna make sure it's <laughs> set up first. <laughs> I've done that before where I've shared my computer and then I have some, okay, it is set up, here we go. <laughs> All right, so we need to refresh our screen. I've shared my computer and then you've seen what I've been browsing. One, one time it was the Good Feet store. I need to get new shoes, you guys. <laughs> so, so here is my Facebook page, which is where you found our video. And I'm gonna click on the video link on the side. And that's gonna refresh what we're doing right now. And we'll just grab the, um, the link for that and bring it into our commentpicker.com and do a search for how many people get a chance at this prize. Woohoo! Oh, this is the current one. Wait, we were doing the first, we're doing this, ah, I'm, I'm going backwards. That way you still have a chance to, to get in on it. You guys make a comment on the one that you're watching right now. We're gonna do this one first. And that's not the one, hang on, because we had part one and part two. There we go. <laughs> All right. Oh, Lucky's talking, did you hear him? Okay, I don't think that's the one. Hang on a minute, because I had a lot more views than that. I had like, oh my gosh, I can't even tell you. Oh, this is the video right here. Hi, Lucky. Okay, hang on. <laughs> Computer issues. This is the one. This was part two of the other one. Okay, so we're gonna click on this one. I swear, I need an assistant doing this with me. Okay, and Lucky, I'm sorry, you do not qualify. How many um, commenters do we have in that full video from last week? We have 207. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Who's the winner for this prize? There's a couple that have won a few times. Um, Cindy Bist Bistrom, I don't think that you have won yet. Congratulations. I was just waiting for um, 
there's somebody who's won a few times. And I'm just like, is it going to come up again? Because I did too. She should really go to Vegas or whatever. This gal, she knows who I'm talking about. She's probably watching with us. I don't know if I've seen her name pop up yet. But here we go. Let's click on, let's do a refresh. <laughs> Can you see Lucky? You know what? I could bring him up here. Um, but he will take over the whole space in the camera. He's, he's a huge cat. He is a big cat. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll hold him in my arms when we're nearing the end of this. How does that sound? For you cat lovers to see him. He's a pretty kitty. Oh, he's going away. <laughs> he's moody too sometimes. 174. Well, all cats are, right? 174 of you are with me right now? Holy moly! And that's just the people that commented. Yay! Thank you all for watching. My goodness. Roberta Caraway, you won. Yay, you get to pick between those um, those uh, paper pumpkin stamps. So congratulations to you. Yay, and if Lucky comes back, I'll hold him up. In the meantime, I hope that you enjoyed what I shared. Make sure that you look at the description in the video after I've posted. Um, I'm gonna try to get on there right after I end this video and we'll put those links in there, put links in there for paper pumpkin subscribing for um, retirement or the online store so you can see retiring products, that sort of thing. Uh, remember to subscribe by May 10th if you want in on the Shelly kit. And I think, oh, I was gonna put a link in there about my catalogs. I think that's it. Anyways, make sure that you look for those and I will post these ideas along with this broadcast, um, this recorded video tomorrow. So watch for that and it's a blog hop. So you're gonna see lots of different ideas using the April Paper Pumpkin Kit. It's worth it to visit and check out all the things that we have to share. There's some really creative people in this hop. I can't wait for you to see it. So next week on May 1st, May Day, May 1st, I will share with you a new idea and I'm not sure what it is. I always <laughs> come up with it like a few days before, um, typically. So May, uh, May 1st at 11 a.m. Central Time. Thank you all for watching me. <laughs> now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.